such an amazing time to live in. Incredible things are being manifested and manifesting and the world is just coming to such a beautiful place every day and it is a beautiful place to be. More energy focused here than ever before on this lady. Than ever before. Words. This is a time of greatest fruition. It's the yes. most productive time. It's a time when your dreams can turn to reality more quickly than ever before. Yes. And I see this every day that the beings that are coming into this time space reality are just so far ahead and moving and manifesting very quickly. Because they haven't gotten in their own way yet. Right. It's beautiful to see. <laughs> Speaking of which, when you're on the leading edge, it seems like since we are all on the leading edge. Um, thank you. We're trying to get you to not make you. a distinction of being on the leading edge while those other scoundrels aren't, because everyone is. Everyone, thank you. Everyone I think is. you just answered my question. I can really go now. <laughs> it can feel like a lonely place to be. Yeah, not lonely, because you dovetail with the source. You dovetail with everything that's in your vortex. It's not lonely at all. But if you're looking to other humans to appreciate you or support you, then you can be lonely. But if you're getting your true resources from source, then you're doing fine. And when you go to needy places to get resources, you don't get filled up. I think you said it all. <laughs> so, so why, as we're on the leading edge, since we're on the leading edge, does we're it, all on the leading all, edge, all on the leading edge, does it feel like some people get really frustrated that other people are very happy on the leading edge and they're not? Yeah, but only those who are on the leading edge and are not allowing their leading edgeness to be on them. When you're on the leading edge and you're tuned in, tapped in, turned on, you're soaring and you're just thriving and you just feel satisfaction for everyone, for ever, wherever they are. Because wherever they are is wherever they are. It's sort of like as you're watching your children and you know that they're going to develop and they're going to know more, but you're not feeling uncomfortable about what isn't developed yet. You're just feeling exhilaration about the progress that they're making as they are adapting and evolving and expanding and renewing and deciding and concluding and creating. In other words, it's a wonderful thing to watch them. So why not understand the same about yourself and all other adults too? So if you feel exhilaration for them, but they're uncomfortable, kind of like Diane was bringing up earlier. But here's the thing. You're perceiving them as uncomfortable, which means you're right there in on that with them. What if they tell you that your happiness makes them uncomfortable? Did I manifest that perception into like verbal form? Yes, because there's an expectation on your part. You're feeling a little competition. And that's what we were wanting to soothe here with you a little bit by helping you to realize, because it was sort of like, since I'm on the leading edge and others aren't, then I have a problem with those who aren't. And we're saying, well, let's soothe that by you acknowledging that they're all on the leading edge. Everyone is. There are masses of humanity who are in the step one part of this leading edge who are experiencing the trauma or the problem or the contrast, who are launching the biggest rockets of all and are contributing to the advances in humanity more than those who are satisfied and content living happily ever after. They're launching the big rockets, you see. You want to give them credit for that. Give them credit for the asking because someone's got to ask before anything can be answered. And so maybe they're in step one and maybe they haven't figured out that there is a step two or a step three. But they cannot be here without contributing in tremendous value to the whole of all of it. And so let's say that you have figured this out, that you are tuning yourself, that you care about the way you feel, and that you are predominantly feeling good. And when you don't feel good, you don't like it one bit. You catch it in the early subtle stages and so you are able to do something about it so you feel pretty steady in your vibration. And you have highs and lows like anyone else. You know what to do when you don't feel good. And so now, because of your consistent vibration and because you are so often in the receptive mode, you are thriving. Everything in your world is going well. You're abundant, you're feeling good, you feel vitality, you're rendezvousing with other happy people. You're just so glad to be alive and eager about life and just eating it up. 
Well, someone else looking at you who wants to feel that way, who doesn't, is going to feel lackful maybe when they see you thriving in all the ways they want to and they're not thriving. Isn't it logical that you are part of the contrast that would help them to identify how they feel? And so they don't feel good, but they're launching rockets of desires. They want to feel better. And you're right. Sometimes people really believe that if you would thrive a little less, they would feel better. Because it's just annoying to watch you live the way they want to live. You've got that really cute boyfriend, or you've got all that money, or you live in that really beautiful house, or you've got that really fast car, or you've got that really wonderful life's work, or whatever it is. And I want that because there is sort of a predominant, doesn't serve you, mentality in your human consciousness that goes like this. The pie of abundance is so big. It's finite and which means the economy is only this many dollars or this much money and if that one over there is taking that great big piece of that pie then the rest of us are left to share what that person isn't taking and we know he wants it all when none of that is true because the pie is growing exponentially because of the contrast and the asking that is happening so no one can ever take more than their fair share of anything. No one can ever take anything that they didn't put in their vortex. And if they put it in their vortex, it's theirs to take. So what people are complaining about is not taking their own fair share out of their own vortex. It's like saying, you drew all the money out of your bank account. And you say, yeah, because I put all the money in my bank account. They say, well, there should be a big collective bank account where we all just get to take what we need out of it. And you say, no, you put your money in your bank account and you draw your money out of the bank account. And it's like that in this vortexual world. You put it in there and you have access to it. And what anybody else is doing with theirs has no relationship to you. And so, yeah, there are people who may feel less than happy when they see you so very happy or less than prosperous when they see you so very prosperous. But you can't help them by being less happy or by being less prosperous. You can help them by wishing better for them. You can help them by not pushing against them. You can help them by staying tuned in even when they're not. You can help them by being in alignment even if they're not and not letting their misalignment take you out of alignment. You can help them by not letting their misalignment make you feel negative and then you push against them. In other words, and there is a little bit of that that goes with all of you. No one really enjoys somebody pushing against you. We get that. But you got to just give people the benefit of the doubt. And a mantra that will help you is that they're doing the best that they know how to do. And they would do better if they could do better. They want to do better because they want to feel better. And the best thing that I can do for them is just wish them well and thrive on as many levels as I can thrive. So that I demonstrate thriving. You ever seen someone in trouble? Does it uplift you when someone gets mugged? Does it uplift you when someone falls down and hurts themselves? In other words, does it uplift you when you feel yourself wanting to be more cautious or wanting to be more careful? In other words, the way you uplift the world is by thriving. But don't beat up on yourself if you're not thriving. Instead, reach for more feelings that feel better until you can find more outlets to thrive. You have not even scratched the surface on your ability to thrive. So I guess what, for me, I see my friends and my students and the people in my life as, as beautiful and as manifestors having everything that they could ever want. And I feel like... And as being at the right place at the right time and being right on track and as figuring it out and as exploring contrast in a beneficial way and realizing that everybody who has ever excelled or exceeded has been there in some regard at some time. So. So when I see them in that way, and they don't see themselves in that way. Well, but why are you seeing them seeing themselves in that way? You see, <laughs> this is a thing that we want you to understand. If you're really doing it, then you don't see them not see themselves well, not that way. They'll tell me. Well, but they won't tell you if you're really seeing it. They'll zig while you zag. When your vibration is really clear about who they are, they will present that to you, not a mixed bag. And so you're like most people. You got a mixed bag about most people. And the reason that most people have a mixed bag about most people is because you're observing rather than envisioning. 
because you're noticing what is you're letting what is dominate your vibration about them so what what is it that i'm creating what feeling am i on that i'm creating that from people i know that i'm creating i know it's not them but like what in me what am i feeling that's drawing that Part of it is the reason that you decided to be a teacher to begin with. You want to uplift. And most teachers, somewhere down there in your psyche and in your vibration, is that I'm going to help people improve their lives. Right. And so you can't help people get better until you acknowledge that there's something that needs to get better. But that's a trap because you activate both the problem and the solution at the same time. So they give you some of both of it. So what you want to realize is that we're all in this together and that they came and that they're on track and you don't need to really dig up the problem in order to find the solution. And most of all, you want to know, this is what you came looking for. This is what your whole life revolves around. We are so exhilarated to give this to you here.